Today we'll be going through how to edit maps using the PokerRed disassembly project with a program called RB Map. Of course, before you do any of this, you'll need a working PokerRed disassembly on your machine, and you'll need to be able to compile the ROMs. So I already have mine set up. Um, and I have another video that explains how to set it up um, on Windows. So first we'll want to download the program RB Map. Um, it's hosted on GitHub, uh, so all the source code is online, and you can download the, the program, too. Um, so go to this Release tab and download the latest zip file and extract the files to anywhere on your computer. Um, so I've already done that. Um, you can run the program by double-clicking on the jar file, and RBMAP will, will work on uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Um, let's start by opening up uh, Pokemon Red. Um, after you've compiled the ROM, you can just find it and open it. And if it works, then you'll be greeted with Pallet Town. Um, so this program looks a lot like, well, not a lot like, but it, it resembles Advanced Map, which is the map editor used to edit um, like Fire Red and Pokemon Emerald. Um, so you, you select tiles on the right excuse me, you select blocks on the right and you can paint them onto the map in the middle. And of course you can you can cycle through all the maps by changing the map number, you can, you can change the tile set numbers that you're looking at the map in, um, you can toggle on a grid which lets you more easily, um, well more precisely paint blocks. Um, and you can also change the width and the height of the map. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that there's these colored squares um, and these just signify the locations of objects. So the, the yellow squares always represent signposts, the green squares represent NPCs, and the purple squares represent warps. You can move them around by holding the right mouse button and dragging. Um, one thing to note is you can't actually save the, you can't actually save the changes to these positions <coughs> using RBMAP. If you want to change the position of this signpost, for example, you'd have to to open up the Pallet Town's object, uh, sorry, Pallet Town's object um, object file in the Poker Edge Assembly project, and I'll probably go through that in a in a different video. So let's do an easy example. Let's let's add a new house to Pallet Town. So we'll just click on this tile over here, and then paint it onto the map by clicking again, um, and same thing for this tile. And let's also at a ledge here. <laughs> um, well you can you can hold down the, the mouse button to paint. So cool ledge. Now that we've made the changes we want, we can save the map. So click on this export map button and you'll you'll be prompted to create a file and save it somewhere on your computer. So we'll call it palettown.blk. I'll go over what BLK stands for in a second. Um, all right, so in the PokerRed uh, project, there's a maps folder. So if you look at the maps folder, you'll see a giant list of BLK files. And each BLK file is, um, it, it's a list of the blocks for each map in the game. So if you look at palettown.blk in a hex editor, we'll see there, we'll see the list of blocks for Palettown. So the top left, um, the top left block has ID 52, and the bottom right block has ID 4F. So what every map is going to do is it's going to just save over this file um, with some new values somewhere around here that will represent the house and the ledges. All right, so we'll overwrite that file now, palettown.blk, and save. Cool. So now if we type git status, we'll see that the the map slash palettown.blk file has changed. So if we recompile the ROM, it will um, rebuild the ROM with our changes. And if we run the game and walk outside, we'll see that hey, there's a new there's a new house in town with a ledge. Great, so it worked. Um, let's do something a little more involved. <laughs> um, we'll just slightly more involved. We'll change the height of Pallet Town. Um, as well as as uh, changing the tiles in it, so we can let's add three more rows. So one, two, three. It will automatically fill in tiles of what you currently have selected over here. 
Um, I don't know, let's just make it a big empty area because I don't want to be creative right now. Um, so we um, uh, empty. OK, so now let's export the map again. Same thing as before. We'll call it same exact file. Um, so overwrite paltown.blk. Um, if we if we compile right now, uh, it won't it won't work like we want it to, because we changed the height here. So we need to actually go to um, a different file and update the dimensions for Palatown, as RB Map can't do this on its own. So if we go back to the PokerRed folder, and go into constants, there's a file called mapdimensions.asm. So if we open that in a text editor, we'll see all of the widths and heights for every map in the game. Palatown's right at the top. Um, and since we changed the height, we need to update this file. Let's see, so width 10 and height 12. So we'll change the height to 12, and, and the width is, is currently the right value. A, A is hexadecimal for 10. Um, so let's save that file, type git status, and we'll see that map dimensions has now changed, and <clears throat> uh, the block file has changed. So now let's recompile the ROM and to rerun the game to see our larger pallet town in action. <clears throat> All right, and here's the, the big empty area. <laughs> cool. So let's see, what else do I want to cover here? Um, changing the width is slightly more, actually it's a lot more annoying um, because RB map is not programmed uh, <laughs> in a very friendly way. So if we change the, the width, it doesn't smartly shift all the tiles over. So you have this kind of cascading, uh, funky business going on here. Um, anyway, if you change the width, you're going to have to repaint all the tiles how you want them, which is a little unfortunate. And then of course, you'd have to update the width in the map dimensions file. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, is there anything else I want to cover? I don't think so. Actually, yes. Let's change Pallet Town to have a forest tile set. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the tile set number to 3, because this is the forest tile set. Um, and then, I don't know, we'll, we'll surround the town with trees and everything. I don't know, we'll just fill it with grass. All right, lots of grass. Oops. Um, and then we'll let's see. I don't know. We'll we'll put this little area in the middle. All right. So we repainted the tiles. So we have to export the map again. Palatown.blk. And now uh, we need to also update the the map header for Palatown to tell it to use a different tile set. So we have to go back to the PokerRed project. Go to the data folder go to map headers and then pallet towns map header. And as you can see here, uh, the tile set is the first byte in the map headers. It's using the overworld tile set for pallet town currently, but let's change it to use the forest tile set. Um, and the reason, the way I magically knew it was forest is um, <laughs> there's a different uh, file in constants called tilesets.asm, and you can see what all the all the different tile set numbers are here. And so forest is, where is forest? Forest. Um, forest has ID3, which is, which matches what RV, RV map said. Um, anyway, so we changed it to forest here. Let's, let's recompile the ROM and run the game to view the changes. Cool, so here's Pallet Town with tile set three and the changes that we made. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Um, that pretty much covers everything that RB Map can do and how you should go about editing maps using the PokerRed Disassembly project. Thanks for watching. <laughs>